Hello class! Welcome back to my channel. Again, I am Ike Sadonis, your teacher in mathematics in the modern world. In today's video, we will have the part 2 of the language of sets. But if you didn't yet watch the part 1 of this video, you can go through the video by clicking the link in the description below. But if you are done, let's now proceed to our next topic, operations on sets. To help you remember the set operations, let's have this acronym, CUPID. C stands for complement, U for union, P for product, I for intersection, and D for difference. So whenever you are asked what are the operations in sets, just remember CUPID. Complement, union, product, intersection, and difference. Now, let's discuss the set operations. Let's start with the intersection of sets. The intersection of sets A and B, written as A intersection B, is the set containing the elements that are both in A and B. In other words, the intersection of set A and set B are the elements that are both found in set A and set B. This intersection symbol means that there are common elements in two sets. For example, in set A, the elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, while in set B, the elements are 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now, take a look at the elements of these two sets. What are the common elements in set A and set B? Very good! The common elements are 3, 4, and 5. Therefore, the intersection of set A and B is equal to the elements 3, 4, and 5. Again, when we say intersection, there are common elements. We can also represent the intersection of sets using Venn diagram. When we say Venn diagram, it is an illustration that uses circles or other shapes to show the relationships between or among two or more sets of things. Given this example, we can illustrate the intersection of sets A and B by putting the common elements of these sets at the overlapping part of the two circles or at this green shaded part. Since the common elements are 3, 4, and 5, we will write 3, 4, and 5 at this overlapping part. How about the other elements of sets A and B? Where will we put 1 and 2, and where will we put 6 and 7? Of course, we will put the elements 1 and 2 inside the set A, but not in the overlapping part. And we will also put the elements 6 and 7 inside set B, but of course, not also in the overlapping part or the shaded in green part. As you can see, the yellow circle illustrates set A with elements 1, 3, 2, 4, and 5, while the blue circle illustrates set B with elements 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the overlapping part of these circles contains the elements 3, 4, and 5. These elements in the overlapping part of the circles are the common elements of sets A and B, or these are the intersection of sets A and B. You will notice that the intersection of set A, which is the yellow circle, and set B, which is the blue circle, is the color green. Because if we will mix yellow and blue, we will produce a green color. This is what the intersection of set wants to show. This first example also shows joint sets. Why? Because they have common elements. Joint sets are sets with at least one common element. How about these two sets? Set A and B, are they joint sets? Let's see. Now, what is the intersection of A and B? Is there a common element in set A and B? Absolutely none. 
Since there's no common element in sets A and B, the intersection of set A and B is an empty set or a null set. Now, we can show it using Venn diagram in this way. As you can see, the two circles do not overlap since they have no common element. And this is an example of disjoint sets. Next is the union of sets. The union of sets A and B written as A union B. So please take note of our symbol for union. This looks like a capital letter U. So union of sets is the set of all elements that are in A or in B or in both A and B. Take note that the union is the set of all elements. It means that we will combine the elements of set A and B to get the union of these two sets. Now, let's use the same sets A and B to understand the union of sets. Again, the elements of set A are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, while the elements of set B are 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Remember that to get the union of sets, we will combine all the elements of set A and set B without repetition in writing the elements. Therefore, A union B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Again, when we say union of sets, we are actually combining the elements of the two sets without repetition in writing the elements. Or hindi po i-repeat yung pag-write ng elements. We only write elements once or the same elements once. We can also represent the union of sets in this way. As you can see, I use only one color because I want to emphasize to you that the union of sets is the set of all elements in both A and B. Now, before we proceed to other set operations, let's try this given sets A, B, C, and D. So, let's answer the following. First, what is the intersection of A and B? Very good! The intersection of sets A and B are the elements 3, 4. Because these elements are the elements that are common in set A and set B. How about the union of A and B? You're right! A union B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And these are the combination of all the elements in set A and set B. How about this one? What is the intersection of sets A and C? Oops! I know you didn't find any element that is common in set A and set C. Since there is no element in common, we can denote the intersection of A and C by an empty set or a null set. And last one, find the union of A and D. So, what's your answer? Good job! A union D is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, and 9. So, did you get all the answers correct? If yes, wow, you are very impressive. Now, let's proceed to the third operation of set, which is the complement of a set. The complement of set A. The complement of set A, written as A apostrophe or A prime, is the set of elements in a universal set that are not in A. So, what do we mean by universal set? Take a look at the rectangle below. This pink rectangle represents the universal set. Universal set contains all sets in a given context. For example, the universal set here represents the numbers from 1 to 10. 
If set A contains the numbers from 1 to 5, what is the complement of A? Remember that the complement of A is the set of elements that are not found in A. So what are the numbers that are not found in A but part of the universal set? Very good. The elements or the numbers that are not found in A are 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this set of elements is the complement of set A. Now, let's have more examples. The universal set contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And in this universal set, we have the following sets. The elements of set A are 2, 4. The elements of set B are 2, 3, and 4. And C contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And lastly, set D is an empty set. Now, let's find the complement of these sets. To find the complement of set A, you will look at first the universal set. So, what are the elements in the universal set that are not found in set A? Very good. The elements that are not found in A but part of the universal set are 1, 2, and 5. So, these are the complement of A. So, A complement is equal to the elements 1, 2, and 5. Next, what is the complement of set B? Excellent! The complement of set B is equal to 1 and 4. Why? Because the elements in the universal set that are not found in B are 1 and 4. How about this one? How about set C? What is the complement of set C? As you can see, the elements of set C and the universal set are equal. So there's no element in C that are not found in the universal set. Therefore, the complement of C is an empty set. Again, why? It's because all the elements in C are found also in the universal set. Remember that to find the complement of a set, we are actually finding the elements of the universal set that are not found in a given set. And lastly, what is the complement of set D? As you can see, set D is an empty set. So if it is an empty set, all the elements in the universal set are not found in set D. So this set of elements is the complement of D. The difference of two sets is the set of all elements of A that are not elements of B. In symbol, this difference of two sets is written as A minus B. For example, the elements of set A are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, while the elements of set B are 3, 4, and 5. So to get the difference of two sets A and B, we simply remove the elements of A that are present in B. So since the elements of B are 3, 4, and 5, we will remove 3, 4, and 5 in A. So A minus B is equal to 1, 2. So this 1, 2 is the difference of set A and B. Another example for the difference of two sets, the elements of sets are M, A, T, H, while the elements of set B are M, A, T. So, what do you think is the difference of set A and set B? You're right. The difference of sets A and B is the set containing H. Just always remember that finding the difference of two sets is just removing the elements of the second set from the elements of the first set. And the remaining elements from the first set is the difference.
Now, let's move to the last operation of set. Let's discuss the product of two sets. The product of two sets denoted by A times B is the set of all possible ordered pairs AB where A is the element of set A and B is the element of set B. This product of two sets is also known as the Cartesian product or the cross product. Now, let's have an example. Set A containing the elements 1, 2, and 3, and set B containing the elements X and Y. To get the product of sets A and B, we will simply pair the elements of the two sets. The first element in set A is 1, while the first element in set B is X. So, the ordered pair 1x is the first element of the product of A and B. How about the second ordered pair? To find the second ordered pair, we will still pair the first element of A, which is 1, but this time, we will pair the first element of set A to the second element of set B. So, the second ordered pair in A times B is 1Y or the ordered pair 1Y. After pairing the first element of A in all the elements of B, let's now pair the second element to both X and Y. So, we have the ordered pairs 2X and of course 2Y. And then, pair the last element 3 to x and y. So we have the ordered pairs 3x and 3y. Therefore, the product of sets a and b contains the set of elements or ordered pairs 1x, 1y, 2x, 2y, 3x, and 3y. So this is how we find the product of two sets. I hope you learned from this video lesson and enjoy watching. If you receive an if you want to receive a notification for the next video lesson, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below and don't forget to click the notification bell all for more videos update. Thank you for watching and have a happy learning. Goodbye.